going to take a look at some of the triad shapes that we learned in the previous video and convert them into powerful and melodic licks and phrases. Let's check it out. If you caught my previous video on chord inversions and how to find them all over the neck, you might think that it was geared towards rhythm guitar playing, which makes sense. I mean, playing chords, you're going to be playing rhythm guitar. However, a lot of people don't realize how powerful of a tool learning these little chord clusters are for improving your melodic sense, your solos, your rippage. That's what it's all about. Let's start with just one shape that we learned in the last video. It was C major. It was at the 8th fret where we had E on the 3rd string, ninth fret. We had G on the 2nd string, 8th fret. And we had C on the 1st string, 8th fret. Now together as a chord, you'd hear that. And there it is as a arpeggio. Let's use that as a springboard for creating a melodic idea. Now let's assume in this scenario that the band is playing in the key of C. The chord at the moment is a C major chord. Here's a lick based on this chord. So if I slow it down, there's the chord tone E, there's G, there's A which is a scale tone, and there's C. All of a sudden, within five notes, I've already played, I've already used the chords notes to come up with a melodic phrase. I'm going to bend D to E, E being a chord tone, back to the root note. So the idea is if you can come up with melodic phrases or licks that highly lean on the notes of the chord of the moment, in this case C major, you're going to create a much stronger connection to the music behind you. And I know a lot of guitar players tend towards scale-based things. Now, every single note I played here is from the C major scale. So yes, these are scale-based licks as well, but with three notes out of seven being the main notes, being the strong notes, your chances of creating a stronger phrase go up exponentially because the notes that you're using to create this phrase are the strongest notes you could possibly hit, the chord tones. So there's, here's the lick again. All right, simple little blues rock kind of thing you might hear in, a, in an Allman Brothers song or something like that. And it's flexible too. You can move this around. Uh, you, can, you can alter some of the other notes. Instead of shifting from D to E, let's go from E flat to E. And maybe instead of the A here, let's put a B flat there. Right? And all of a sudden you have a bluesier twist to it that previously wasn't there. But again, the main notes are the C major chord tones. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at um, the next inversion up from that. You might remember that the inversion beyond that one looked like a D chord, but up here at the 12th fret, where this note is your root note, C, and you have G here, C here, and the E here. This is a great little cluster that uh, a lot of players use to, to create licks, whether they realize they're doing it or not. <laughs> but here's an example. Now you might notice I ended that particular phrase in the previous chord shapes territory. I ended up using the E from this shape. But that's a great thing because you can you can combine chord shapes. You can use one chord shape to pro propel you to the next one and combine these two shapes to create even cooler melodic ideas. So that phrase started on the E. You can hear this. I took E, I bent it. Wow, my voice just went up there. <laughs> I took E and I bent it to F and let it come back down. I grabbed C, our root note, right there. G, right away, I've exhausted the chord tones. I've already used all of them. 
but I use the G to bend A. Then I grab F. My target note here is E. I want to land on a chord tone in this particular case. Which I do, and I bend it to F, which is its neighbor tone. And I just add some vibrato. So the basic premise there is I started on a chord tone. I ended on a chord tone, which is going to be a very, very strong statement. So this is something I try to do all the time, whether I'm composing or improvising. I'm trying to connect these chord ideas. And again, because the chord of the moment was a C chord in my imaginary band, my imaginary song, these chord tones are the strongest notes you can possibly hit. Uh, of course, you're going to use neighboring scale tones to connect these things together, but Honestly, if you weren't picturing this chord, would you have come up with this lick? Or... I know I wouldn't. I w if I was thinking scale, I would probably be doing... I'd probably be playing just scale-based things, which are great. They're cool. They're awesome. But if you can kind of combine melodic things based on chord shapes and let the scale stuff fly. In between, you're going to have a really well-rounded uh, phrase book, I guess you could call it. So that's the basic idea. You can do this with any chord shape at all. The idea is to picture the chord shape, heavily lean on those notes as your main, uh, let's call it scaffolding, as the main clothesline in which you hang other notes. The other notes that you play will depend on the key that you're in, of course, and the scales that correspond with it. But the idea of using the chord shape as your main structure is going to greatly improve your melodic sense, which is really the ultimate thing we're all trying to accomplish here.